So today we will be starting chapter 11. And this one is a little bit of uh, a chapter that is math intensive. So if you guys have your calculators, can we please bring them out? And also make sure that your calculators have the log function in them. Do you see the button that presses the one that says log on it? We will be using that button today. So let's talk about what does power and pressure mean? So in order to explain that, I'm gonna start with a definition of work. So imagine you are a supervisor on a job and you want to send a box of construction material from the ground floor to the workers on the 40th floor. How much work do you need to do in order to do that? So the definition of work is force times the displacement. So the displacement is the distance something has to travel. So if this is your building, here's you as a supervisor standing here and you have to send construction materials all the way up to the 40th floor. So the amount of distance that it travels is called distance D. And the weight of the object is the force that it has to be taken times the height H, or this could be height for our case. So the work that you need to do in order to move these materials up is given by MGH, where this is the weight of the object that needs to move, and this is the distance that needs to travel. Now the question is, the same amount of material can go up in say three days, the same amount of material can go up in an hour, the same amount of material can go up in 10 seconds. What's the difference? This is where power come in, comes into play. So the power defines the time that something takes to do to go from one place to another. So imagine, are living on the 120th floor of a very tall building. You can have multiple ways of getting up there. One could be walking the entire distance up the stairs. How many people would like to do that? How long do you think it'll take you to go to 127th floor? Hours, right? Even if you're extremely fit, it'll take you hours to go up. So what do you, what do, you do? You get into an elevator and the elevator takes you up. How fast that elevator moves determines how much power is needed. So work is the same. You are the same person. You have to travel the same amount of distance. So the amount of work that's needed is exactly the same. It's just your weight times the distance. Power comes into play when you have to travel it in a shorter interval of time. So let me give you another example. Uh, race cars, normal cars, all cars go zero to 55 miles per hour, zero to 60. Then why are some cars more expensive? Why are sports cars more expensive? Because they get to zero to 60 faster. And the amount of power that they need in order to get from zero to 60 faster determines how expensive something is, how much gas mileage you use, how much you know materials are needed, what kind of an engine you need to have and all of those things. So power is defined as work per unit time. Or it can also be called energy per unit time. because work and energy are related to each other. So if the work depends on time, the rate of work that you do in one second is 980 joules per second, that in one minute, the same work, the rate will become 16.3 joules per second, or the same work done in one hour will be 0 0.73 joules per second. So in order to raise a mass from zero 
to 10 meters needs 980 joules of work. Why? Because it's MGH. M is 10 kilograms, G is 9.8, and height is 10. And the answer is 980 joules of work needs to be done to raise it up. Now, if that work is done in one second, if that work is done in one minute, that is 60 seconds, or if that work is done in an hour, which is 3,600 3, seconds, determines how much power you're going to need. The faster you want something to happen, the more power you're going to need. So power is defined as the rate at which the work is done or work per unit time or energy per unit time. And the units of energy were joules the units for time are seconds, so the units are called watts. A very common unit that you will see on your electric bill is called kilowatt hour. And what that means is a thousand watts of electricity that you use in one hour. So if we try to convert it into any smaller units, it just becomes very difficult for us to understand. So kilowatt hour, kilo means a thousand watts in one hour. So that's the unit. It basically equals 3.6 times 10 to the six joules. So 3.6 million joules is one kilowatt hour. So have you ever looked at the electrical, like a light bulb? It has either 40 watts on it or 60 watts or 100 watts on it, W-A-T-T-X. Have you seen that? If not, that's a homework for today. Go look at your light bulb. It will have a power rating on it. And if it says 60 watts, that means it will use 60 joules per second of energy to light it. So that does that mean a 100 watt bulb will be more brighter than a 40 watt bulb? Yes because a 100 watt bulb uses up more power. So it will be more intense. It will have more brightness rather than a 40. Okay, so here's a question. How much power is needed to raise a two kilogram mass to the height of three meters in 15 seconds? So you will find the work first, which is MGH. What's the mass that's given? What's the G? And what's the height it needs to do? Joules, right? Okay, so then how will I find power? Work per time. So what is work? 58.8 joules. And what was the time? 15 seconds. So power will be 3.92 watts. So another term that's used for cars a lot is horsepower. Horsepower is about 750 watts. And historically, most car carriages or cart carriages were used by horses. So we've started to define the horsepowers in our cars, the, the power that's in our cars as horsepower. And usually what it was, was how much a standard horse is able to give us. So that's like what a horsepower was. And we regulated it, sort of standardized it to 750 watts. That's all it is. 